Welcome to Designer Digital's bi-weekly tip, February 7th, 2020. This week, how to recolor parts of more complex solid color images with adjustment layers in Photoshop and Elements. One of the most wonderful things about digital scrapbooking is having the ability to recolor images to match any project. With a few recoloring techniques in your digital bag of tricks, you can stretch your crafting resources and get the look that you see in your mind's eye. In this series of tips, we've been exploring different ways to recolor embellishments and template components. We've learned how simple it is to recolor the entire images or selected parts of an image, but in this tip we'll work on recoloring parts of more complicated images like word art, brushes, or journaling blocks where you may want to use several different colors. When making a selection with the marquee tool is too difficult, this more advanced method gives you greater control. It's a lot like the brush method that we used in the previous tip, but this gives you another option. In Photoshop or Elements, begin by opening an image that you want to recolor. You can also open an image such as a paper or photo that contains the colors that you want to use for recoloring the original image. Choose the new color by clicking the foreground color chip at the bottom of the tools panel. This brings up the color picker. You can drag and click the cursor to a new color if you'd like, or you can drag the cursor outside of the color picker window to click on the digital image. When you drag it outside the color picker window, it turns into an eyedropper that allows you to suck up a new color. If you know the color values, you can just type it in here and click OK. The foreground color changes to the color that you've clicked. In the Layers panel, click on the layer of the image that you're recoloring. So I have the word art here that I'm going to recolor and I'm going to click on that image. Click the Lock Transparent Pixels icon. It looks like a little checkerboard. This causes the software to ignore all of the transparent portions of the image and it recolors only the parts that are visible. Next, click the Create a New Fill or Adjustment Layer icon, which looks like a circle that's half black or half white in the layers panel. From the pop-up menu choose hue saturation. When the hue saturation dialog populates tick the colorize button. It's near the bottom of the box and it uses the foreground color that you selected to recolor the image. Move the lightness and the saturation sliders to get the color exactly right. When you're satisfied click the X in the top right corner of the dialog box to close out the properties. Now the whole image is recolored. Select the hue saturation layer in the layers panel and press Control E or on a Mac system Command E on the keyboard. This merges the hue saturation layer to the original layer so that the original is now recolored. Choose another color by clicking on the foreground color chip again and getting a new color. Next, select the image layer again and create another fill or adjustment layer selecting hue saturation. Tick colorize and again tweak the saturation and lightness sliders until you get the color just exactly the way you want it to look. Now this is where the fun begins. Close out the properties box and press D, X on your keyboard. This changes the foreground color to black and the background color to white. Make sure that your foreground color is changed to black and manually adjusted if necessary. Get a round brush by selecting the brush tool. Choose a circle brush from the brush picker at the top or the bottom of the window depending on your software. Make sure the mode is set to normal and opacity is at 100%. And then click the hue saturation mask in the layers panel so you'll want to Click on this white box, this little icon in the hue saturation layer in the layers panel. Begin by brushing on the portion of the image that you want to recolor. On this one, it's actually opposite because we're brushing away the portions that we don't want to be the new color and we're allowing what's underneath it to shine through. 
As you click and drag around the image, it paints black on the white mask, and it allows the bottom color to show through. You can zoom in to see details as you work with the brush tool. Switch the foreground color to white to repair any mistakes you're making as you're brushing. So if I accidentally brush over this little dot, all I have to do is hit X on the keyboard and then brush again with white. Then I'll hit X again to get black again so I can continue brushing. To add additional colors, create new hue saturation adjustment layers. So first I'll go over to the foreground color chip and pick up a new color and click OK. Next I'll create a new hue saturation layer and tick the colorize button. Tweak the saturation and the lightness sliders to make sure that the colors match exactly. And then once again I'm going to change the foreground color to black and the background color to white, get a brush tool, and begin brushing in the things that I don't want to make into the new color. So we're brushing away the portions that we want to remain the colors that we made in the earlier steps. And we could even come in here and do some of these until you get just the look that you want. This technique allows you to recolor solid images like brushes and stamps, overlays, word art, and many other PNG images with one or more color. The beauty of this technique is that by switching the foreground and background color, you can quickly correct any mistakes. Thanks so much for watching this week's video and be sure to check back in two weeks for another Designer Digitals tip.